blessed and pleasant. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is Monday, the 22nd day of November, and man, let me tell you, I feel like November is come and gone, to be honest, and I am not sure why it went by so quickly. It's a beautiful day here in lovely Dangriga. I hope you are having a blessed day where you are as well this morning. We're going to kick things off this wonderful Monday morning with one entitled, Awake My Son, Awake My Soul, <laughs> and With The Sun. Let's have a listen.
what a lovely, lovely one there. What a lovely, lovely one there. We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today. And there we go. That's a bit better. For today, November the 22nd in 2021. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Words from Psalm 122, verse 1. Using versicle 1 on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle to Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37 in our Books of Common Prayer. O shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed, that may have been displeasing to Almighty God, that may have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps would have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Let's have a listen. Psalm 106, Part 1 Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord, or show forth all His praise? Happy are those who act with justice, and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect, and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebearers did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt they did not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hands of those who hated them, and redeemed them from the hands of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors, not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang him songs of praise. But they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked 
but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses in the camp and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. Fire blazed up against their company and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of the Redeemed. It is taken from Revelations chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. At this time, we have our Bible reading, which is taken from the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, and 9 to 17. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, and 9 to 2 to 17. For then, in those days, and at that time, when I restored the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations. They have divided my land. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare war. Stir up the warriors. Let all the soldiers draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hook into spears. Let the weakling say, I am a warrior. Come quickly, all you nations all around. Gather yourselves there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord. Let the nations rouse themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the neighboring nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Go in, tread, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow for their great wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their sunshine. The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shake. But the Lord is a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. So you shall know that I, Lord, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy mountain, and Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall never again pass through it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For this morning, we are looking at the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2 and 9 to 17. And this is a kind of departure away from what we were looking at in the first book of Maccabees, but not really. And let me get the words back here up on screen quickly. Aha, there we go. Now, we can link this with the book of Maccabees in terms of this is going to now be in the book of Joel, um, chapter 3, a, a judgment in the valley of decision. And it's kind of a warning towards the nation. So it is a promise to bring back the scattered and mistreated people of Israel into the presence of God. And that is exactly what Judas Maccabeus is doing. What Judas is doing is Judas is getting rid of all the things that would have defiled Israel and motivating in the people a desire in order for them to 
come back to the things of God. And this reading from Joel links itself right into that. It is a warning to the nations. Yes, and it begins in chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. And for in those days, and at that time, when I bring the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather a great nation. And this is Joel's prophecy, and it is still concerning the time period that that is, yes, it shall come to pass afterwards. Yes, so this is a broad period of the last days that Joel is talking about. And it's it's interesting because... Many have the wrong idea of the last days, thinking only in terms of the final years or months immediately before the return of Jesus in glory on this earth. But when you think of scripture, when you think of the last days as an era, yes, there are different last days coming depending on who is talking about the last days. You understand? And so that is interesting to notice. And in these last days, the, the, the prophet is saying that the Lord will bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. So... In a lesser immediate sense, this was a fulfilling of the return from the Babylonian exile. In, in the greater ultimate sense, it could be seen as the fulfilling of the end of time regarding Israel. The, the point where an expectant Israel would welcome Jesus, let's say, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So you could look at the prophecy from Joel as the short term or the long term. But the truth of it was, in either case... What was being lived out now in 1st Maccabees was a return of the people. And while it was a return of the people, it was a return of the people saying, look how good things are, but be cautious because there is going to be a judgment. Yes? And Joel was written at a time when a terrible plague of locusts brought the judgment of God upon the people of God. And at a time like that, it is easy to think, God, you are dealing so harshly with us. But what about the ungodly nations and their actions? A lot of the times we think, look at how harsh the punishment, but we never think, look at how bad my action was to deserve it. Yes. And the people are thinking God didn't care about them while they're in exile. This is why they turned to foreign gods, but now they are moving back. And this moving back is a good thing. This moving back is, as you would have heard in First Maccabees, it is a good thing and the nations are returning to God. But there is a warning. God warns the nation that he will retaliate against them and against those who have mistreated his people. Yes? And after the warning, it jumps to verse 9, where there's a proclamation to the nation. There's a gathering of the nation for a war of judgment. Yes? And Joel says, proclaim this among the nation. Prepare war. Stir up the warriors. Let the soldiers draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hook into spares. And that's opposite to what we would have heard before. Before we heard, there will be so much peace that you will beat your swords into plowshares and your pruning and your spares into pruning hooks. But now it is saying, prepare for war. Hard times will come. Beat your plowshares back into swords and beat your pruning hook back into spares. Yes? And it's interesting it's interesting that the Lord is giving them this kind of this kind of caution, this kind of, 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 of prophecy, this kind of advice and foresight. God challenged the nation to prepare for war, but not against another nation, against him. And this will, one day, this exact thing will come. Yes? Beat your plowshares into swords. You are going to go into battle against God. You should have every weapon available. You should also practice your best positive thinking. Let the weak say, I am strong, it says. But it's interesting because God is going into battle, not against Israel, but against the nations surrounding Israel who are mistreating Israel. And that's what we see Judas Maccabeus fulfilling. He is going up against larger forces than him and conquering in the name of God. Yes, he's going up against nations with weapons that he doesn't have, and yet his plowshares and his pruning hooks are still overcoming them. And God is there judging all the surrounding nations, right? Through the nations, will, though the nations will come against God, yes, every weapon formed will not stand against him. And that Judas Maccabeus is showing in his day. 
and the day of the Lord is in the valley of decision, it says there. And it tells us what will happen. Multitudes of multitudes in the valley of decision. Joel looked out upon the valley of Jehoshaphat at the battle of Armageddon, and he sees multitudes facing their eternal fate. Yes? And the valley of decision has been used in countless evangelical meetings to show people that they will stand in this judgment. Yes? And that heaven and earth will, will shake. But you know what? What is interesting is the fact that the Lord is a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. That's it right there. You shall know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion on my holy mountain. Jerusalem shall be holy and the stranger shall never again pass through it. And that was a big promise. That was a big promise that we see in 1 Maccabees being fulfilled through the work of Judas Maccabeus. Judas is proclaiming and professing and reclaiming for the glory of God. He is doing things for Yahweh and to encourage the people to worship Yahweh. And it is all well and good. And a judgment is coming upon the foreign nations and king after king come against Judas Maccabeus and fail. And it's interesting because the Lord is fighting on their side. And the Lord is fighting on our side. But God's people and God's blessings are based on the covenant relationship that is maintained. And we know that God is not the one that breaks the covenant. Man is the one that breaks the covenant. And the fact that it is man that breaks the covenant means that we have to be mindful that we are the ones to forfeit that which God has desired and designed for us. The Lord will roar from Zion and his voice will cause the heaven and the earth to shake on our behalf. The Lord is our God and he will defend us. He's ready, willing and able to do it. But he does it for his people. And if we do not act as his people, how can we claim the shelter that he has promised? And that is what Judas was trying to tell them. Continue to turn towards God. Continue to seek God. Continue to make sure that your heart is set on the things of God. That God can continue to prosper us. And that is what our message should be. We need to continue to seek God. We need to continue to go after the things of God. We need to continue to proclaim the glory of God. That God can be the shelter for us that he has promised to his people. You can't expect the blessings of the covering if you refuse to walk under the shelter. It doesn't work that way. And I think far too often we see God as a vending machine. If I put in two prayers, God will give me what I want. He's looking for a covenant relationship. A relationship is not a one-time come and only get it when you need. A relationship takes commitment. A relationship takes work. And forever we should be working to maintain our relationship with God. For it is through the maintaining of this relationship that the glory of God, the blessings of God, the mercies of God are revealed to us and through us to others. A beautiful portion of scripture from Joel. The Lord will stand against your enemies and bring them into the value of decision. But you must make sure that you are where you are supposed to be. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I love scripture here. We continue then in the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Saviour has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collect for this morning is the collect for proper 29. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we want to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Friday was Miss Audrey Francis. Celebrating a birthday on Saturday was Miss Janelle Carcamo and Reverend Richard Woods. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mr. Collington Armstrong, Mr. Dean Joseph, Miss Geraldine Usher, and Miss Reverend Chitan Thompson. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Ruth Thompson and Miss Shalika Florid Ferguson. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you had a blessed and beautiful birthday, and we pray God's blessings upon you for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline. Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Verilyn, Miss Marilyn, and Miss Abelina. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Allison, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, Miss Julie, Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie. Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Financia, Miss Ilona, Miss Donna, and Miss Catherine. We pray for Miss Mary, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Marcia, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, Miss Ruby, Miss Caroline, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Harris, Miss Arlette, Miss Betty, Miss Leolin, Miss Geraldine, Miss Glenda, Miss Dominique, Miss Olga, and Miss Bernadette. We pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Walter. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Father Hardy, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Dion. We pray for Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerris, and Mr. Edmundo. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Ian, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Father Constancio, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Michael Griffin. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember the families of Mr. Marco Pot, Mr. Dudley Lopez, Mr. Francisco Garcia, Mr. Johnny Chi, Miss Marietta Martinez, and Miss Leolin Tench. 
We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we continue to pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for God's protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember our students, praying for Tammy, Ashley, Anwa, Brittany, Karina, Ria, Courtney, and Akua. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, Charles, Barry, and Alvin at this time. We continue to pray for the protection of our and enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We pray for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, and Nurse Julie. We continue to pray for healing for persons who are infected with COVID-19, those in the various isolation wards. We pray for the ready availability of a cure or vaccine, for people's willingness to be protected by the vaccine. We pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. We continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic, for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, persons who are struggling to make ends meet. We pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, the churches, the private sector, and all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community who are most severely affected by this pandemic. We continue to pray and ask for God's protection over ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disasters. We pray for those who are in the recovery phase of natural disaster. We continue in our prayers to offer unto Almighty God those prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to be with you on this beautiful Monday morning. I pray you had a blessed long weekend. Mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it was a long weekend indeed. I pray you are rested and you are raring to face the new week ahead. Mm -hmm. I want to thank those of you who joined us for our online worship service yesterday. We want to thank the people of Christ the King for leading us in that worship. And of course, we want to congratulate um, Christ the King on the celebration of their 131st anniversary of their formation here in the community of Dangriga. And you know something? Last year would have been big for 130 and we couldn't. 131 and we can't. But listen, 140 will not pass us. I'm just saying. <laughs> we want to thank all the members of the online ministry team, including the choirs and all who put the service together for their continual dedication to making sure that these services take place. I want to thank you as well for your continual support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. It is Monday. So following this, we have noonday prayers at midday, children's Bible minutes at 2.30, evening prayer at 5.30, and then we close the day off with Compline at 9 p.m. I invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are able. And I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful Monday and week. We're going to wrap up our morning prayer this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, Come Gracious Spirit. I pray that God's gracious spirit be upon you to guide you into the way of all truth. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. Thank you.